in the prison. He was mining uranium by his bare hands. And uh, so he was exposed to radiation for so long time. My father, for years, had problems. He wasn't able to work. He lost his balance. He, was, uh, he could not breathe. He got very, very sick. He loved us all. But let's face it, after 10 years of separation, he was a stranger to us. My little brother, instead of being warm and loving to him, he talked to him, yes, sir, no, sir, simply in terms like to strangers. And my father suffered with that. My younger brother was six when he was in prison. Now he was 16. I was nine, now I was 19. He missed his own children growing up. We had a very difficult situation. You know, I was practicing music and he just suddenly, stop it. You know, I said, yeah, I will. Just let me to finish this piece. No, stop it right now. To me, it was strange. I never heard him talking like that. But it was more than he could handle. I remember once he asked my brother, Victor, put these things where they belong. And Victor told him, those are Alenka's things. I don't even know where she usually has them. And he turned around and hit Victor. He looked at my dad and then he ran out of the house. We never hit each other. And at that moment, father realized what he did. He ran after Victor, but he could not find him. Uh, my father ran to the river and he said, I am such a curse to my family. I am going to end my life. We gather in time to somehow talk him out of it. And we prayed. And at that time when we left, he saw his son under the tree and they got together and my father ask for forgiveness. And from that moment, they became very close. They were really father and son. Unfortunately, it uh, took three more years and Victor was killed. He went to military service in 1962, three weeks prior to Easter. We heard the knock on the door and there were two military officers. They gave mom Victor's Bible and told her, we brought Victor with us, but he is in coffin. We just came to announce to you that he is dead. They told us the story about him falling down from somewhere and breaking his neck. But then we got a letter from his friend. He told us that it was a room for a number of soldiers. Victor told them, today I think we all should go to church. And oh, sure, we will. So Victor said, I will go to officer and ask him if he would let us to go. The officer yelled at him that they could hear it in their room. And at night, they found Victor shot. We know that Victor was saved, and so he's with the Lord now, and that, that is a great comfort to us. Communism, it was gradually getting better. Dubček became the prime minister, and they started the so-called communism with a human face, which was much more tolerant toward the Christians. But then in 1968, when the Russian came to occupy the country, it changed our attitude. The whole invasion started because of the Prague Spring, uh, when the Communist Party, Czech Communist Party, was trying to reform themselves. And the Russian basically stopped it and uh, they went back to what it was before. When I, we heard on the radio that the Russian tanks are crossing our borders, I started to be terrified. The has woken up into a fifth day under foreign occupation. The night was one of terror. Occupation troops fired at cars, motorcycles, every moving object without warning. Nobody yet knows how many people were killed and wounded because the occupation forces even prevented ambulances from reaching their patients. My začení probíhalo tak jako probíhalo začení mnoha jiných. V té první fázi vlastně přepadla státní policie. That was very scary. I had two children and I just thought, will they go through what I went through? I cannot live in Czech Republic anymore. 
we have to leave, and so we did. My parents, they didn't think there is a life for them outside of the country. They were getting old, and my father, at that time, he was already over his severe depression. Since my brother's death, he had peace in heart. So he said, why should I leave? I have my little garden. He was happy there. He found a slip stating, leave immediately, police is looking for you again. He just took his slippers, one white shirt and pyjama and left. Everything was left in our country. So I and my wife, we moved to Switzerland, where we again started to work as a Salvation Army officers. But because my both children with their families moved to the United States, in 1971, I was transferred from the Switzerland to America. He lived till 94 years old. It was like a hit in the face of those who imprisoned him. I can say that on Joseph Grobel, the biggest impression which I have was this man spent his life with God and God is with him all the time. The faith uh, the old Salvation Army officers displayed is something I want to have as well. Where it doesn't matter what happened around you and how difficult it is around you, what matters is what's inside of you že vůbec nezáleží na tom, kde je, jaké jsou jeho ekonomické poměry, jaké jsou politické poměry v místě, kde žije, ale že je nejdůležitější vztah k Bohu, k Ježíši Kristu. A tak jako já jsem to poznal u svého otce, poznal jsem to u Josefa Korbela. I always think about that Bible verse in Isaiah 58:11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. And you will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. And that was so true about my father. When I was 18 years, I've been searching uh, for the meaning of my life as a young person and I uh, came across the flyer on the bus stop saying um, first Salvation Army meeting Czechoslovakia after 40 years. I grew up in the communist regime, the Salvation Army has been closed down. Uh, so I went for that meeting in the evening and that was the first time I heard about Jesus Christ. I felt uh, that God is calling me to the service and following God's call. I was the first Salvation Army officer commissioned uh, after the communist era in 1996. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it. We are always posting content, so don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for helping us share change.